Okay, so in today's video, I wanna talk about how to create a custom thumbnail for your power grade within DaVinci Resolve so that when you're going through and looking to put different power grades on different footages, it makes it really easy to find the one you're looking for. So let me jump into the color page here and we'll show you what I'm talking about. And we've got our first clip with my grade already on it. So this is cool. And we're gonna open our gallery here on the left. We've got all of our stills and all of our power grades here. Now, I talked about how to build a power grade in my recent video, but basically you're gonna build out your node tree however you see fit. Then you can right click the image, grab a still, and then it saves this still. So now if we delete all of our nodes, oh no, and go grab your power grade and it's there. Okay, so now here's one of the very important steps when it comes to actually saving your power grade. Let's go on each node. Once you've developed a structure that you like, you wanna clear it. So take each node, right click and reset node grade. Reset node grade, reset node grade, do that for every single node that you've got, except for your color space transforms. Now I have a DaVinci Resolve micro color panel, so I can just kind of click through this. Okay, now I've got everything reset except for my color space transforms. And let me just confirm that. Move my color space transforms out of the way. So here is our node structure that we want to work with. And if we go right click, grab a still to save our power grade, we run into the problem where the power grade is just the picture of whatever frame that we're on. So I don't really want this frame to represent this power grade. So how am I going to fix that? Let's jump back over to the timeline and we're going to add an effect over here. So let's just grab a text, drag it right over the top of our frame. And you might need to zoom into your title here and scroll down to background. Let's max this background in width, height, and opacity. So it has a black background. And let's call this custom info. So that's in place and it's right over our playhead where we've made the power grade on this truck clip here. Now we don't care about the truck clip, we just care about this node tree, right? All we want is this power grade. So now let's go right click, grab a still. Look at that, custom info. And we can see this is a little too small. So we can go back over to our text. Let's increase the size of this and let's break it into two so it's a little easier to see. Now let's say that this was S-log footage and you wanted to go into Rec 709. So you maybe would just save something like that. Now you can right click, grab still, and look at that. And actually let's make this accurate. Open up our effects button here and go to our color space transform in, input color space. Let's say Sony S gamut. and Sony S log. And then now I can actually grab this as a still. Now let's go over here to my Canon footage. I would just need to go over here into my power grade, look for my C log three. But this was not Rec 709, this was actually Canon Cinema Gamut. And look, there's our colors. So I would go over here for this one. Let's drag a text over, we'll do it one more time. And we'll call this Canon Cinema. 709. We'll make it as big as we can and then go down to your background. Outline width all the way, outline height, and no opacity. Okay, so now I can right click, grab a still, and let's go over here. Here is some more Canon cinema footage. And boom, okay, that's looking pretty good, except for on this particular one, I do know that my exposure is about two stops over. And so in that case, I'll go to the HDR tab, tell it that it is Canon Cinema Gamut, tell it that it is Gamma C-Log 3. Then let's drop it down by, what did I say, two stops roughly? Maybe this is one and a half. Consult our waveform here. Okay. Oh, and the other thing you want to do is watch your luminance mapping when it's C log three. You're going to lose a lot of detail once you go over a certain threshold. I used to like no tone mapping for C log three. 
and then just lower your highlights all the way in your primaries tab and manage it yourself. I thought that had kind of a more pleasing look. What do you think about that? And then maybe this one needs a little more contrast or maybe this one brings some more shadow detail in there. Pop up a little gain. Yeah, I'm not really loving this. Take a little contrast out. And when you're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut, you want to set your pivot to 0.336. So this is middle gray for DaVinci Wide Gamut. And if you have your middle gray set to proper actual middle gray on your pivot, then you can go a little more nuts with your contrast adjustments and have it look good because your middle gray is protected. That's kind of a nice little trick there. Set your pivot to 0.336 for middle gray preservation in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So that is it. That is how you create a custom thumbnail and you can see much easier. Now when I go through to clean up my power grades section here, I can get all these things out of here that should really be stills and I can just focus on my nice thumbnails and you can make these look however you want, honestly. So you just wanna scroll down to your background, click on color, make sure you have your text effect selected and say you want it to be blue, click on your blue and then don't forget to raise the luminance here. It can be really frustrating if you just click on color. Oh, I want this blue. And then you press OK and nothing happens. So make sure when you get your color selected, you're raising your luminance and you'll see it in real time right there. So there we go. So see our Canon Cinema stuff. We want to save this as a blue thumbnail. Go ahead and grab still. And now that's blue. And maybe our S log one, maybe we'd make that orange or something because. We all know those Sony colors have a little bit of a different look to them. Maybe something like that. Now, S-Log, there you go. Save your S-Log, grab a still. So now I'm scrolling through, I can easily see, let's say, oh, here's an S-Log clip, boom. There's my S-Log footage. Oh, here's a C-Log clip. Let's get my Santa, Canon Cinema LUT on there. And then you can make your own power grades that are way easier to see uh, than just the standard method. So hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.